What are the Bills' plans at receiver now that Stephon Diggs is in Houston? Is Rashi Rice a sell in Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues right now? And what numbers should you expect from Deshaun Watson in Cleveland for 2024? Plus, six-time FFPC Dynasty League champion Scott Cohen drops in to talk a little bit, a little bit about Anthony Richardson, J.K. Dobbins, Jonathan Brooks, and so much more. We've got a great show for you. Farrell Elliott is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Can't stand the pressure. I've seen greater men than these Broadcast live and heard around the world. You are now watching the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. Welcome to the high stakes fantasy football hour presented by myffpc.com with your host, Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for analysis from the best players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Farrell Elliott. Solace in the scripture, are we not all our father's sons? I became a man, nobody ever told me what a man was. Thank you, Rob, and greetings and salutations to all of you, Balkaholics and Ferreliacs. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour, presented by myffpc.com, myffpc.com, the Fantasy Football Players Championship. I'm your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman. My co host is the definitive commissioner of fantasy football, Farrell Elliott. Uh, before I tell you what's going on on tonight's show, let's tell you about all the great things we got going on with the FFPC right now. Uh, number one, Empire Leagues are here, and they are spectacular, according to uh, many of our players who have already signed up for them. Now, Empire Leagues are a version of Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues, but 50% of the annual prizes are going to go to the league's Empire uh, pot in the Empire Leagues. Any team that wins, or the first team that wins two years in a row, is going to take down the Empire and the Empire pot, right? So if you want to play and you feel like you can win back-to-back -back years, this is hugely lucrative and financially beneficial if you can do that. And, oh, by the way, after that happens, then the league is disbanded, and everybody who started with that league will get their deposit back uh, in this. So check that out, myffpc.com. If you want to um, adopt a dynasty orphan or check out the other dynasty leagues we have going on for startup drafts, myffpc.com is where to go. Numerous squads have had their 2024 entry fees lowered. Uh, some as little as one dollar. So you're basically getting a free year if you want to play in those dynasty orphans. Myffpc.com is where to go for that. The never too early best ball tournaments I checked today. Both tournaments, both the classic and the superflex, are nearly 85% full. And remember, these are only slated to go until April 25th, and then we will shut down registration. They will stop before the NFL draft starts. So if you want to win $25,000 or a $10,000 grand prize, uh, grand prize for as little as $125 or a $35 entry fee, myffpc.com is where to go for that. 30 second, 60 second, two hour, six hour clocks available over at myffpc.com. Last thing I'll mention, Fantasy Pros Championship. Once again, a $1 million grand prize in a $6 million grand prize pool, uh, in a $6 million prize pool. You don't have to wait until June or May or July or August or September to draft. You can draft for a million bucks right now at myffpc.com. Myffpc.com is where to go for that. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment on the video, share it with your friends and enemies, and get notified every time we go live. Um, Hudson Kern Reeve piping in into the chat right now. Is this live? Yes, it is live. Anytime we have an Ivy League professor, uh, we're thrilled to have him on. So we are fan uh, fantastically celebrating the return of Hudson Kern Reeve to the live chat. Uh, right now. Welcome back, uh, Prof. And we will uh, welcome in the co-host with the most, the definitive commissioner of fantasy football. Check out the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship over at kffsc.com. He's the commissioner, the definitive commissioner of fantasy football, one Farrell Elliott. Farrell, welcome in, man. Hi, buddy. This 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 uh, this start time is too close to happy hour. And I did <laughs> <laughs> so we might have all kinds of fun tonight. Who knows? Hey, you know, Hudson Kern Reed being in the room is great. He plans on coming to Kentucky this year, by the way. I can't wait to see him. I did see him in Kentucky one year, and it was one of the best years of Kentucky ever. You know, I he think. looks. You, you know, he looks good. Yes, you, you he know, does. He's, he's you know he's a romance and spring, and you know, he's in top of his form right now. Mm -hmm. he's, he's doing some really great research. We we really need to get need to get him on the show and talk about some of the wonderful things he's doing. 
Well, you know, Kern is um, he studies insects, right? And and yeah. I would love to get him on for a, a study of um, bee uh, beehive management as well as what it means for Noah Brown now that Stefan Diggs is in Houston. I think that would be a great combo episode that mm. nobody is doing anywhere in fantasy football. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Now he's creating rumors that are un, un, um, unsupported. Yes, yes exactly. Mm. All right, so let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. The, thank you, number one, thank you for tuning in early tonight. As According to my facts and figures in front of me, uh, in front of me so many people of you, uh, so many of you people have tuned in early, which is fantastic. Um, let's bring in our guest early tonight as well. Mm. This is a guy who has won six uh, FFPC Dynasty Leagues in 2023 alone, and he's here to help us sort out the veterans, the rookies, everything that we have going on tonight. Um, we want to welcome him in right now, one Scott R. Cohen. Scott, welcome in. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. We're very excited to talk fantasy with you. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing good. Uh, just had a few earthquakes today out here in New Jersey, but other than that, it's a normal day. Just a normal day for Jersey. <laughs> so did you did, – I mean, like, I, I, where I'm in Wisconsin, Farrell's in Kentucky – did you feel, because I know people in, in New York, some people didn't notice it, but you felt it, right? I, I think my daughter and I were the only two people that didn't feel it today. I, I, oh, really? Yeah. My wife texted me. He's like, did you feel the earthquake? I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what were, were you at home? Were you at work? What were you doing I, when I it was, happened? I was in the basement of a, of a large building. So yeah. it was okay. underground. So basically, that there you the, go. And then the second one, it was like, it was like two hours ago. My wife said, did you just feel that? I'm like, huh? No, I, I missed them both. I don't know. 4.7 will get the chandeliers moving, and if yes. you have a dog, the dog will look at you funny. Yeah, That's my wife said it lasted about 15 seconds, but I, I was underground, so I didn't, mm. I didn't feel it. Well, I'm glad that. you're safe, no, and, and I'm so it. glad that, that you can hop on uh, tonight with us, um, Scott. This is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, a guy who has yes. won um, numerous leagues uh, last year. Do you have anything, like, Scott, let me ask you this. Yeah. Six league championships in the dynasty level last year. Do you attribute that to anything uh, specific, or was this just sort of like, look, this is what I do. I win leagues. Was there no. anything different for you last year? No, I mean, first of all, anybody who's won a league will tell you there's a lot of luck involved as well. Um, to be honest with you, all those teams I had um, I had bought that, that year um, off Dynasty Depot, and I remember I went back and added up. I spent, I think it was $1,180 on those six teams. Mm -hmm. So, and, and each of the ones that I wanted also was a one or two seed. So it, there were some good investments. So, you know, I look for teams that I can win. I've drafted obviously many others, but you look for a team that can win, but it, it, it's, you know, I mean, who predicted Aaron Rodgers would get hurt on the fourth play last year? I mean, no. he, killed, he killed Garrett Wilson. I had the I sixth had, play. I had a ton of shares <laughs> of Garrett Wilson, you know, I had a ton of shares of him in other leagues. And, you know, he, you know, you, you, you watch him each week, you'd pray he'd get you 15 points, you know, without, with, with Zach Wilson. So um, no, nobody, nobody out there can say oh, they, they're, they're, they're a certified expert at this. Because if you were, you'd win every league every year. It, it, it's, it's definitely there's people that I think that are better than others at this. But it takes luck, injuries. You know, luck and injuries to me is like a third of, of dynasty football. Yeah. Honestly, Scott, are you a Jets fan or who? Who? Where no, does your fandom no, lie? I in? Just, no, no. <laughs> so it's really bizarre. I um, I actually live in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Um. I've been married twice. Both my wives, when I met them, were Cowboys fans, and I'm actually a oh, I am a Cowboys fan actually. And mm. and honestly, if you want to hear an even funnier story, I live in New Jersey. His house is like worth three times more than mine. But my neighbor is Devonte Smith, mm. so I have, oh. an, I have an Eagles fan as a neighbor. So go go figure that one too, because we, we you know I'm like eight miles from Philly. Th this is okay. So this is really good. I'm glad to hear that that you're a Cowboys fan. Because we are going to get into a lot of stuff tonight, guys, including Jonathan Brooks potentially going to the Cowboys. And if we, even if Brooks doesn't go to the Cowboys, we're going to talk about that Cowboys running back situation as it pertains to fantasy. Let's lead things off with the elephant in the room and something that really hit me like a ton of bricks. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but Adam Schefter reported that the Texans traded uh, Stephon Diggs, or excuse me, the Bills traded Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans, and the Texans since then have removed the final three years of his contract um, uh, after this year, making him eligible for free agency after this season. In addition to the $3.5 that he was guaranteed next year, they're going to take that 
and put that on to his 2024 salary. So he is making 22 and a half million plus guaranteed money. He turns or he is 30 years old right now and he's he was under contract through 2027 that's not going to happen anymore he is going to be a free agent after this year so this is basically a one-year deal guys the the texans uh ended up giving up a, a couple of draft or excuse me the bills ended up giving up digs and a couple of draft picks in exchange for a second round pick this could be it for i mean it could be digs one and done in houston Farrell, i'm going to throw this to you first Let's talk about the Houston angle for this. Um, Diggs, who has been a target monster, one of only four players in NFL history to have four consecutive years of 100-plus catches. He goes to a team with ascendant C.J. Stroud, Joe Mixon in the backfield, who we'll get into later on in the show, Dalton Schultz, and then the two big guys there, Tank Dell and Nico Collins. Can you kind of enlighten us on how you're handling Houston Texans in your drafts now, knowing that Diggs is going to be there to take some targets away from Schultz, Collins, and Dell? Mm, I'm going to elevate the quarterback, obviously. I'm going to continue to take Dell where I've been taking him, and I'm going to love the fact that people will sour on Collins, who is a fantastic ball player and I can now get later. Uh, the running back there speaks volumes for what he's going to, to be able to do. And with all those things that Diggs brings to the Texans, if I'm working in that front office, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, I think the culture of the general manager and, and, and the head coach think – that they uh, that they can come in and 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 influence this player uh, to be the type of contributor. And gosh, he's a great contributor on the field. But you know, in the NFL, you play football twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. I don't want this guy yelling at my young quarterback and and things like that. So I, you know, I I really am in a wait and see approach. Uh, but from a fantasy standpoint, I'm not particularly concerned. Um, Diggs is going to make a big contribution. So the quarterback is going to throw the ball 120 more times than he did last year. Over 18 games, you're the 17 games, you're the mathematical uh, professional there, <laughs> the genius of the mathematical area. Can figure that out. But, uh, you know, he's going to throw the ball five or six more times a game, and that's good enough for everybody. That is the Texans um, side of it. Scott, let's throw it to you for the Bills side. And I know we exchanged a few emails about this. You know, Diggs is was really good the first month and a half of last year, and then he fell off the face of the earth. The Bills are going to have the tight end combo of Kincaid and Knox. They brought in Mac Hollins. They brought in Curtis Samuel, and they still have Khalil Shakir here. Can you enlighten us on, on how you are viewing the Bills pass catchers with Josh Allen, but now without Stephon Diggs? Yeah, I mean, I think you definitely have to elevate uh, Dalton Kincaid a lot i mean i think he becomes a top three honestly i think he becomes a top three dynasty tight end to be honest mm -hmm. with you. and 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 obviously in, in daily fantasy as well i mean typically the first year for any tight end is, is difficult no matter who you are and he did he did pretty well last year he came on at the end and, and obviously when knox was in there it hurt him because he wasn't playing as much but when you looked at the games that knox was out i thought kincaid did very well mm -hmm. i definitely think he 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 went a notch or two up on the dynasty ladder um I mean, I, I think it hurts Josh Allen. I think short term, um, it, there's no doubt that they're going to draft a, a wide receiver. But will that yeah. wide receiver be any good? And what round are they going to pick him in? You know, mm. going up to even like to like you know Burks on Tennessee. Like everybody was hot for him last year, and this year he was dropped in like half the leagues at cut downs. So are they going to draft a wide receiver? Will the wide receiver be any good? If they can draft yeah. a wide receiver who will be good, then Josh Allen goes right back to where he was. As yeah. as, he, as I think he was the. To be honest with you, I think he was the QB1, as far as I was concerned, yeah. as of last week. So is he still the QB1 in Dynasty? I'm not sure. But if he's not, he's two or three. So that other receiver, how that receiver will do, will depend. Because I, I definitely think that he's not going to run as much as he did. So I think it hurts Allen short term. I think it elevates Kincaid. Knox, to me, is really you know, not really worth that much. And we'll see about Samuel. I think he's definitely the, the wild card in all this. He, he did pretty good in, in several games last year for the Commanders. And he's still relatively young. He could definitely be a, a sneak, a sneak, you know, a sneaky, uh, a sleeper pick this year. I'm to say. Yeah, and, and Scott, I'm with you on the Samuel thing. This is a guy that you know. I'm looking at the never too early best ball data right now on FantasyMojo.com. And by the way, if you 
have a, a subscription of Fantasy Mojo and you play in the FFPC, you're doing it right. I highly encourage everybody to subscribe to FantasyMojo.com. Darren Armani, the godfather of the Fantasy Pros, or excuse me, the Pros versus Joes uh, Championship. Uh, make sure that you are subscribing there. Curtis Samuel, wide receiver 55 in the 12th round. Now, he's still going to go up from there, but I think that's a great buy um, for anybody who is drafting early. I, I love the Samuel pick. I love the Kincaid analysis too. I think he is going to skyrocket. The, the Josh Allen thing, I think you're right on. I don't think everybody has him as their number one quarterback in dynasty, but I think everybody has him as a top three quarterback in dynasty. And because of his legs, he's still going to uh, stay up there as well. I think that's what's so compelling about the uh, the Bills offense this year. A lot of people are saying, oh, they're rebuilding. Yeah, you don't rebuild when you have Josh Allen on your team. They're going to be okay. And I think there's ways to capitalize on this. Um, Chargers running back, Cowboys running back, Bills receiver, as Scott alluded to, Farrell. These are three of the positions we are watching in the 2024 NFL draft. Now, we were going to be watching what the Chiefs were going to do in the draft with wide receiver until they signed Marquise Brown. And you think, okay, Kelsey, Marquise Brown, now you got Rasheed Rice there too. This is great. And then Rasheed Rice decided to race a Lamborghini with apparently some weed in it, which is not great. Not not great, Bob. I don't I don't I would never encourage any NFL player to do this. Mm-hmm. The the latest we have on it, and I don't even know if this is – I don't know what who to trust. I've seen 10.8 grams of marijuana. I've seen 10, 10.8 ounces of marijuana. I've seen 10.8 pounds of marijuana. <laughs> now, two of those three would be a felony in Texas, and that's really, really bad for Rasheed Rice. But as it stands right now, um, we're still gathering information. And gathering information is a process – that I think dynasty players can capitalize on. Calvin Watkins said that Royce West, Rasheed Rice's attorney, that he was driving this Lamborghini that was involved in the six-car pileup last Saturday that left four people with minor injuries. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, Farrell, we got a YouTube comment last week on the show. All this Rasheed, all this Rasheed Rice love goes right out the window. And, yeah, it did because we found out about this the next day. Your thoughts on Rasheed Rice and dynasty right now what should we be doing? Should we be buying, holding, selling? Uh, I am in one of the empires. And if you're not, I think everybody should be, Scott. I bet you're already in every one of them. But, you know, uh, he went today at the end of the fifth round, and I would have been tempted to pull the trigger. But there's little things that leak out about this uh, that that would make you push it, push him further back, you know. We want to win this year, and availability is important. I don't know. I'm curious as to when the district attorney is going to make his move and file what he's going to file here, and at that point, we'll know more. And I think that reports are that uh, this may take some time to learn what the penalty is and perhaps what the uh, attorney that appeared on the on uh, television to advocate for his client, Rice, uh, We'll do a good job in delaying this until uh, some way, some adjudication until after the season. And if that's the case, then Rice, uh, the best place that Rice could be would be uh, on the football field because that's that's the place where he's going to uh, escape his problems. But what a damn uh, what a damn way to to sidetrack a very very promising. You know, everything was going right for this player. Uh, so it's it's a difficult thing to work at. Scott, have you adjusted the way that you're handling or sending out trade offers for Marquise Brown or Rasheed Rice right now based on this latest news? Well, I mean, be- before the, this incident, for lack of a better word, I, I had a, actually had a, a lot of shares of Marquise Brown. I, I sold off a few of them, but I, I really am high on him mm-hmm. because I feel like, number one, Anytime you're catching passes from Patrick Mahomes, it's a good thing. Yep. He does have a little bit of a drops issue. I get it. But if you look at the quality targets he's going to get, to me, that's going to be far outweighed by any, you know, any inconsistencies he'll have. And, and honestly, even without Rice's issues, I really felt like Marquise Brown was really set up to even have a better year than Rice, to be honest with you. But mm-hmm. as far as dynasty goes, I, I think Rice in the worst case scenario is going to get suspended for maybe one to three games. I really don't think it, it really affects his, his dynasty value that much at all. If you're doing redraft this year, yeah, maybe. But I also think, just like Farrell said, you know, it, it most likely any good attorney is going to try and get this push back to at least the end of the season. So I don't think it really hurts him at all this year. Um, but I, I, I like Marquise Brown anyway. But and, and I don't think Rice will get suspended this year. But I think it's a it's with the marijuana, 
uh, for sure. Yeah. It's definitely a criminal charge. Where, felony or not, I don't know if that matters. It's not a domestic violence mm -hmm. case. I don't see six games, but definitely one to three games at some point in the future. So if it's next year, even if it's next year, which I, I, I agree with Farrell, I, I think it's a near certainty to be pushed back. It doesn't really affect his long-term dynasty value, I don't think. I'm totally with you. Uh, you know, Theo Greminger was just on the Sonic Truth podcast, a player profiler podcast, and he said he ended up getting Rasheed Rice for a second and a third rookie pick. Like, that's just insane to me that he was able to get that. Okay. Um, so, and, and, and so this is a advice to all the FFPC dynasty players that are watching this. Like, go out and make your offers for Rice because you might be able to hit the go, uh, the jackpot on getting him for, for a very low price. Currently in the Never Too Early Baseball Tournament, Rasheed Rice is in a glut of DJ Moore, Brandon Ayuk, Michael Pittman, Debo Samuel, Stephon Diggs, Mike Evans, and Tank Dell, all going between the 305 and the 402 right now. I would imagine Rice is going to fall a little bit further, and I would imagine that if you like Rice, now is the time to strike, whether you're drafting in the Never Too Early Tournament, whether you're playing Dynasty, send out those offers for Rice, because I think come October or November, or even maybe even earlier than that, like Scott alluded to, it might be paying dividends for you for sure in that Kansas City offense. Scott, let's move on and, and talk about Cleveland uh, here for a second. Mary Kay Cabot, who covers the Browns, said that Deshaun Watson told her he's going to be ready to play in week one. Now, he had season-ending shoulder surgery um, just before Thanksgiving last year, so you would imagine that he would be ready for week one. He has the highest base salary for anybody in the uh, NFL right now, of any quarterback, I should say, in the NFL. And Kevin Stefanski says that Watson, he's comfortable where he is. He's right where he needs to be in his recovery. Now, Watson is going to have the benefit not only of um, a healthy Nick Chubb, we think, coming up on the, season, uh, on the start of the season, but he's also going to have Jerry Judy to go with Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper and the resurgent David Njoku last year who caught a lot of passes and a lot of touchdowns from Joe Flacco. The weapons are there. Deshaun Watson in the number two early best ball tournament right now, Scott, is not going until quarterback 22. Have you found that you can get some deals on him in Dynasty? And if you can, are you even looking to acquire Deshaun Watson right now, given how bad he was on the field last year? Yeah, oddly enough, in I believe three of the leagues that I'm in, he was actually dropped at cut downs. Um, Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Sean Watson. If it was Deshaun Watson from, you know, 2019, he, he back then, he, he had to be a, a top five dynasty QB. I don't even think a healthy Deshaun Watson, uh, 22 sounds about right. Mm. I mean, he, even when he was healthy last year, he, he had weapons. He, he just wasn't doing very good. You see Joe Flacco come in and Njoku becomes tight end one and, and Amari Cooper, you know, I mean, Deshaun Watson, it, really quarterbacks generally, you know, we saw Russell Wilson do it recently but generally quarterbacks don't fall from grace that that quickly mm -hmm. but to me deshaun watson if i could buy him very cheap i would like i said he was dropping a few leagues i might draft him in like the third or fourth round in the rookie drafts but i'm not really big on deshaun watson i honestly i feel like if you're a cooper or a joku owner you're hoping he gets hurt and and just whoever mm -hmm. backs him up does better because he's just not a top flight quarterback anymore i don't i don't it, it's it's bizarre what happened to him whatever happened to him when you miss all that time, skill sets can't erode, and it's been – it seems to be difficult to, between his ears more than what is going on on the field. I, I, I root for the player, and I hope he I hope he can do very well. He's certainly getting paid to do very well. So. <laughs> You're stuck with them. I mean, they can't, they can't do anything. Let's hope that he can um, uh, step back up and regain some of it. But I, I think, yeah, at 22, I, I think that's – quite a bargain you could risk on other quarterbacks um you you could make fruitless risk on other quarterbacks when when this guy could uh could deliver you know yeah people are going to be bending over backwards to like and and I'll I'll just use this as an example as far as um Deshaun Watson goes he is going right next to Baker Mayfield and Drake May he is going right next to Derek Carr actually he's going ahead of Derek Carr and Will Levis um, there's going to be players that are, people are going to be drafting Aaron Rodgers and Jaden Daniels and Matthew Stafford, and it's not going to be close, and they will let Deshaun Watson slip. Now, as far as best ball goes, if you're a, um, a volume drafter in best ball, yeah, you should have some shares with Deshaun Watson. If you are a volume dynasty player, I think that there there is a, a reason to go out and grab him on the cheap if you can, and I think you can right now. Um, that is my thoughts on that AFC North team's offense. Let's go to a different 
AFC North team's offense featuring Derrick Henry. Farrell, I'm going to throw this to you first. John Harbaugh said that the offense in 2024 is not going to be reliant on RPOs. Quote from Harbaugh, I think we're in the right place with our RPOs. I don't think it's something that we're going to like. I don't think we're going to like to go wholesale towards because Lamar has got so many different ways he plays the game. And there are other things we like to do, to be honest with you. I don't see us going to a specific offense that runs those more than anybody else. RPOs will be a part of what we're doing for sure, but they're not going to be the main part of what we're doing. You think about what Lamar Jackson's been able to do for players like Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins over the years, and now Derrick Henry, a future Hall of Famer, is going to be the lead running back in that backfield. If you look at the never-too-early best ball tournament right now, Derrick Henry is RB11 at the 304. You can get him in the mid-third round right now, Farrell, which means that you can get him much cheaper than that in Dynasty. Is there a, a path to fantasy greatness and championships by trading for Derrick Henry in Dynasty drafts and drafting him, quote-unquote, on the cheap right now in the never-too-early best ball tournament because he might have a really, really big season playing behind Lamar Jackson? I'm going to answer that question one way, as opposed to Harbaugh, who answered his question three ways. There's there's three different ways that he gave an answer to there. He's as slippery as they come. You got to love it, Harbaugh. It's genetically inclined to be that way. Yes, I would love to draft Henry. I don't want to overpay for him. I, I'm doing a strategy in the Empire right now where I'm I'm building with young receivers at older running backs, and he's still on the board, and hopefully I can get him cheap. So, yes, that's that's my move is to get this player on this team because, I, you know, to me, Derrick Henry has proven that that he's still a little bit ageless, you know, and, and some of these rookie running backs that come into the year, come into, into the league, uh, some of these younger backs, I don't know when they're going to hit the wall. I haven't seen Derrick Henry's wall yet. What about you, uh, Scott, when you look at this uh, Derrick Henry thing, like me as a dynasty player, I'm like, God, I don't really know if I want to invest in him. But I also understand that at the end of the 2024 season, I could be kicking myself if I didn't get Derrick Henry on the cheap, which I think he's going at right now, given his age and his workload. How do you feel about Derrick Henry and Dynasty? What have you been doing? Yeah, I mean, if I'm a Dynasty player and I'm trying to win this year, I'm, I'm trying to buy Derrick Henry everywhere I can. I mean, to me, as of you know, today, April, what, 5th, 2024, to me, he's going to be the Raheem Mostert of next season. Mm. I mean, look at look at the average running backs, what they've done on Baltimore. And you're, you're talking about one of the greatest running backs of all time, honestly. He has to be a top 10 of all time. If he can just be as healthy as he's been, how many touchdowns do you think he can score? I mean, I, it, 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 to me, 20 would be, like, not, not too far you know, out to think about it. I mean, coach might leave him on the field, Scott, when they're in the red zone. That would yeah. be my first move. <laughs> I'm Henry, leaving him on the field. He's yeah. not going to stand beside me on the I mean, side. I don't, I don't really think the RPO is a big deal because that's really not mm. Derrick Henry's thing. I mean, mm -hmm. Derrick Henry's hand him the ball and he just yeah. he just mows you over. So I don't really, to me, it doesn't matter what Harbaugh says about RPOs. We're going to hand Derrick Henry the ball and he's going to run really hard and he's going to run people over and he's going to score a lot of touchdowns for this team. That, that's all I would really care about. Yeah, you think about who was getting goal line last year. A ton of it was Gus Edwards. He's in Los Angeles now, and Derrick Henry could be labeled for a lot of that. Right? I, I, I continue to think, like you guys are saying, he is underrated both in Dynasty and Redraft, and I think that's what people should be taking a long look at if they plan on winning championships in their Dynasty Leagues or in their best ball leagues going forward this season. Scott just mentioned Raheem Mostert. Uh, Scott, let's 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 kick you over on, on this uh, Mostert versus – not versus A-Chan uh, thought, but Mostert – ends up signing a one-year extension with the Dolphins. He's going to be 32 before he takes a regular season snap in 2024. He's going to make $5.5 million in his deal. Now, I said, actually, Farrell, last night on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Show with Stacey Perez from Fantasy and Frames, a, 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 uh, uh, um, a, what do I want to say? A spokeswoman. A redhead. A redhead and a spokesperson for the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship. We were talking about this, and I said, look, look I think this is great news not only for Mostert to play next to Achan. It's great news for Achan to play next to Mostert. I, I think that this is a mutually beneficial thing. Um, now, Achan is going in the mid-second. Mostert is going in the mid-eighth. Scott, give me your thoughts on Mostert and Achan this year. How do you feel about them for this year? And how do you feel, again, we, we talked about Derrick Henry if you're in a win-now window. How do you feel about Raheem Mostert if you're a dynasty player in a win-now window acquiring Mostert on the cheap from a, a team that maybe doesn't have long-term plans for him? Yeah, to me, I mean, Mostert, you know, he had 
a great year last year, maybe the best, you know, of any running back in fantasy football. But I mean, he was definitely a lot more injury prone than Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, I don't even know if he's ever missed more than one game in a season. So if I'm the Dolphins, I really did that probably because we're saying to Raheem Mostert, we're going to ride you again this year a lot. And we're just going to pray that you stay healthy. Um, as long as he can stay healthy, it's definitely a, a dangerous backfield duo. And I still would be buying shares of Mostert, but you just have to be concerned. It, you know, can he just stay healthy for the year? But if he can, don't think he'll duplicate 20 touchdowns, but I think on that offense, 12 is like a, a floor to me. You know, Mostert has never been defeated by anything other than his own body. And he continues to be one of the fastest players in the league. And he's continued to contribute big numbers around talented teammates. So that's what he's got at Miami. That's what he had in the 49ers. And Scott's dead on. There's enough carries for both these guys back there. Farrell, let, let me lob this to you first. And Scott, I want you to weigh in on this Packers wide receiver situation. But Matt LaFleur, and I apologize if I brought this up on the show before, but Matt LaFleur sure. said that Christian Watson has worked with a special lab to address his hamstring injuries and his soft tissue injuries that he's had. Adam Levitan from Establish, Report, uh, Establish the Run had this report on him. Um, Watson is interesting because he he didn't necessarily have a history of it in, in college, but since he has been with Green Bay, he's had a lot of soft tissue injuries. Now, they sent him down to Madison, Wisconsin, which has a lot of equipment, a lot of doctors that specialize in this type of thing. Oh, Christian shoot. Watson, and I've said this on a couple of shows now, Christian Watson's dad on Twitter has said already that the doctors who are working with Watson down there did find something. Mm -hmm. And there is a treatment plan that is already underway to make sure that Watson remains healthy going forward or as healthy as he can be. When he's healthy, man, he is great. You talk about his touchdown uh, percentage, his touchdown reception percentage. It's among the elite in the NFL right now. Um, he had 422 yards, five touchdowns last year, but that was just in nine games. That's basically half the season. You extrapolate that, you're looking at almost 900 yards and 10 touchdowns. He is awesome when he's healthy. The problem is he needs to be healthy. So let me pitch this uh, to you, Farrell, right away. Okay. Christian Watson is basically going two rounds behind Jaden Reed in the Never Too Early Best Ball uh, tournament right now. How do you feel about these guys? Let's talk about redraft and and um, and uh, dynasty. Jaden Reed versus Christian Watson. To me, this is encouraging news about Watson, but I've always said I need to see it to believe it. And if that puts me behind the eight ball and I miss out on Watson, so be it. But I need to see it first before I want to acquire him. Well, I knew the reason that you brought this up is you wanted to talk about Jaden Reed. I don't know why we just don't talk about Jaden <laughs> Reed. You know? uh, but anyway, um, the lab in Madison is a cover. Uh, he's actually in – uh, what was formerly known as East Germany at a lab there where uh, <laughs> then the father is, is, is doing a great job. Everybody needs just to be quiet about this guy and let him get healthy. But, you know, I believe that we will find out that the, uh, the new uh, guy playing James Bond, what is it, Aaron Taylor? Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson. Is Aaron that official? Taylor I don't Johnson. know if that's official yet. The, the guy who runs this lab will eventually be a Bond villain, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. But in the meantime, Watson, it, it's somewhere over in East Germany. That's where Watson is. It's NFL Europe all over again, just in East Germany. Scott. They're going to get him healthy. And <laughs> yeah. then your Jaden Reed won't get to play because of East German precision in the health care of Watson. I this uh, and the coach needs to just say, you know what? That's in the hand of the uh, doctors and the athletic staff, and we hope to have him by by camp. We hope to have him by season. And he, 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 so, Scott, Jaden Scott, Reed's a, Jaden Reed's the number one Packer receiver. Don't you agree, Scott? Because that's who we really want to talk. About. Yeah, I mean, if there's a special lab, I think they need to send like Mike Williams and Darren Waller there because mm -hmm. you know if that could just fix every player, we we wouldn't have any injuries in fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, this is a special thing. This yeah, is only available right, for well, Green Bay. Said, if there's a special only lab, can we send some other players there? I mean, no, to me, Green Christian, Bay only. Yeah, Christian Watson is is super talented. Uh, there's there's no doubt. Um, if he can just stay healthy, to be honest with you, you know, I disagree with you, Farrell. I, if he can stay healthy, I think he's better than Jaden Reed. I mean, don't say that more, in front of Balky though. Well, he's more, okay, <laughs> he's more explosive, but he, but you know, he can't stay healthy. But I mean. If he could, that would be great. Um, the problem, I think, I think Jordan Love is a superstar. I think yes. he actually is probably a little too low on the dynasty rankings. I, to me, I think he should be sixth or seventh at worst, a dynasty, because he has a great offensive coach. He's already shown he's a superstar. He has great receivers. Now he has an amazing running back behind him. What What, what is there not to love about Jordan Love? And he stays healthy, mm -hmm. at least so far. He's never missed a game. 
No, he, yeah, I think he's still in the draft right now, Scott. Yeah, he should be above Joe Burrow. He should be above Justin Herbert, in my opinion. He, he's, yeah. he's phenomenal. But Watson, I do like Watson. Um, I just wish he could stay healthy. The special lab can help him. But unfortunately, there's just some people that play football, which we don't, that just can't stay healthy for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, even Keenan Allen, he would love to see him play 17 games this year, but he seems to always get hurt. So if this special lab works, like, we have to definitely send more football players there for sure. Yeah. To Scott's point about Watson and and Farrell, if, if I misled you, I apologize. I do believe at the peak of their powers, Watson is a better wide receiver than Jaden Reed. However, I think it is easier, significantly easier, it seems, for Jaden Reed to get to the peak of his powers than Christian Watson. So, I mean, I, I think, that, and I don't think it matters because they're both going to be huge fantasy football contributors because of the quarterback, because of the team around them. And yeah, because of good health. So I'm, that, I'm okay with it. And, and that's the thing, guys. If we look at the ADP in the never too early best ball tournament right now for, for Packers wide receivers, and, and this is excluding like the Luke Musgrave, Dontavian Wicks, Tucker Craft discussion, who I also think are very capable of putting up big numbers given the opportunity. Jaden Reed is wide receiver 34 at the uh, 608. Christian Watson, wide receiver 43 at the 810. So Watson is going two full rounds after uh, Jaden Reed, and he's being drafted as a number four wide receiver. So if you are in a fantasy pros championship draft, a never too early uh, best ball tournament draft, Watson to me would make a little bit more sense than Jaden Reed. That said, if you're in a close 12 team league, I'm taking Reed every single time over Watson. And I think both of those guys are going to be good this year. But Watson, to me, has the higher ceiling of the two. Let's go to the YouTube chat right now. Michael Esri is, is popping in there. He's in a dynasty startup draft currently. He has Patrick Mahomes. He has Justin Herbert on his team right now. So now he's wondering, at the 606, should he take – I'm assuming this is this is Jaden Daniels over T. Higgins. Jaden Daniels has fallen. I'm assuming – am I reading this right, Farrell? Do you, do you also think that it's Jaden Daniels he's talking about here? Mm, I don't know, but I suppose so, yeah. Okay, so so let's roll with that. Scott, I'll throw it to you. Jaden Daniels over T. Higgins at the 606 when you already have Mahomes and Herbert. How would you weigh in on that? I would I would rather have T. Higgins. Um, I, I mean, you know, Mahomes. The thing about Patrick Mahomes is that when you look at any of it, you're never going to bench him in any game. Mm -hmm. So you should be starting Patrick Mahomes every week unless unless he's injured or unless he's off. So Herbert, I do I do love Justin Herbert. I, like I said, I just love love more. Jaden Daniels definitely could have some better upside with the with the running, but I, I think you're, you're you're very well set at, at, at quarterback with you know it, at worst case scenario the number two or three dynasty quarterback. So I would take Higgins in that spot if, if that were me. Let's go to another question from Hudson Kern Reeve Farrell. I'm going to throw this to you, Balky. Who is the Green Bay tight end to really target? For me, it's Luke Musgrave. They drafted him a full round ahead of Tucker Craft last year. Musgrave consistently played ahead of Tucker Craft when Musgrave was healthy last year. So I'm targeting Luke Musgrave here if I want a Green Bay tight end. The thing is, these guys are both going late. Musgrave is tight end 17. Tucker Craft is tight end 24. And they're basically going in the mid-10th and the end of the 14th round. I like Musgrave better, and I'm willing to pay that price. How do you feel about it? Exactly the same way, Balky, and I'm glad to see you've come over to my side. <laughs> Even though I know your 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 craft is a middle of the field guy, um, they they've both got um, they both got serviceability to an NFL team. Musgrave has the highest traditional tight end future. Uh, this goes back to when we're considering drafting rookies now uh, in the startup dynasties, as opposed to after the after the draft. Um, the landing spot is so important, and I didn't care for uh, Musgrave's landing spot as much as I would have liked him in other places. So, yeah. Um, guys, we are we only have about 20 minutes left in the show. We haven't really talked about rookies at all. So, Scott, yeah. I want to pitch this to you right away, given uh, that you will be drafting in numerous rookie drafts coming up in, yes. in uh, a little too, bit too uh, many, over a month. Many. Yeah, too <laughs> many, exactly. Yes. Um, no way. Roma Dunze. According oh. to Jordan Schultz from Bleacher Report, is actually going to meet with the Arizona Cardinals. And I think this is interesting because the Cardinals have the 104 pick right now. They're not taking Odunze there. However, if they do decide to trade out of that pick, uh, maybe to Minnesota, maybe to Denver, or anybody who's interested in J.J. McCarthy, they could trade down to the back end of the top 10 or maybe 
um, you know, the front end of the teens where Roma Dunze could be available. Now, Odunze has already uh, met with the Bears, who have the ninth pick, and the Jets, who I believe have the 10th pick here. He is going to be uh, uh, speaking with the Cardinals now. I, I think this is interesting um, because Odunze is – okay, let me, let me bring it back. If we were going to take – Roma Dunze, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. I think, guys, personally, if they were in last year's draft, all three of those guys would have been drafted ahead of Jackson Smith and Jigba. So this is a huge thing this year when we consider the talent. Scott, how do you feel about Roma Dunze um, and, and the fact that he's meeting with the Cardinals? Where is If he is drafted by the Cardinals, man, he's their number one target uh, going forward. If he's drafted by the Bears, he's not their number one target. They already have Keenan Allen to DJ Moore. If he's drafted by the Jets, he's not their number one target because they already have Garrett Wilson. But Odunze with the Cardinals, this is juicy. How do you feel about him at the next level, Scott? Definitely uh, extremely talented. Um, definitely have seen in the dynasty leagues, you know, most most people, at least definitely me, I think the top four are pretty solid and sold. And I've seen – I've gotten offers for – I had a guy uh, last week say um, – he offered me a small late pick to switch one, four and one, five. And he's like, it's just one spot. But that one spot is different is, is major. Cause you got Harrison neighbors. I've nicknamed him Romeo. When I talk about Odunze, I yes. just say Romeo cause it's Rome and the O just like, <laughs> I, I honestly feel like I named CMC CMC. I, I honestly, feel like I named Romeo. <laughs> so I'm right now saying, if you're talking about Odunze, just say Romeo, but he's definitely, he, he is just as talented. He's almost just as talented as the other two. So mm -hmm. I it, like anywhere else in Dynasty, it's landing spot. But as far like mm -hmm. Jackson Smith and Jigba, to me, he's a superstar, but he, he's stuck behind DK Metcalf. So I don't necessarily agree with that comparison. I think he's a little more talented than maybe Romeo, maybe not Neighbors or Harrison, but he's he's a stud. It, like I said, if you go to the Jets, he may not be picked for, you know, he, he, I, I don't know. Because, he's you know, Garrett Wilson is a, to me, is a major superstar, a top seven Dynasty overall player. Yeah. So whoever goes to the Cardinals will be a hot commodity, whoever that is. I think they're just interviewing him because I think that they ultimately might move down. So if they're picking at 9, 10, 11, 12, they would mm -hmm. probably pick him there. But Neighbors and Harrison, I don't think there's much difference besides maybe the, the name and the, and, the, and the quality and the NFL stock, you know, you know the, the, the son of, of, of one of the greatest wide receivers also of all time, his dad. So I, I like Romeo a lot, just where he lands. I, I think, and Farrell, I'm going to throw this to you here real quick on Odunze. Um, I am with Scott mostly on this. I do think while all three of these guys here, – here, here's my take on it, guys. The floor for all three of these guys, Harrison, Neighbors, and Odunze, basically about even. I do think the ceiling for Neighbors and for Harrison is negligibly higher than Odunze. I don't know if Odunze – has that next level talent, that generational no. talent that I think Neighbors and Harrison have. I think Odunze is going to be a number one receiver. I think he's going to be a number one receiver in the league for a long time. I don't know if he ever hits what I think Harrison and Neighbors are going to hit. And that's why Odunze is number three firmly for me, for rookie wide receivers. But it's also part of the reason why he is number three. And there is a deep yawning chasm between three and four for me this year. Odunze to Thomas. So I have neighbors and Harrison on their own tier. I have a Dunze basically like a half tier below that, but then a massive drop off after that. Farrell, how do you view these top three receivers? Interchangeable. And I might like this player better. Romeo, as Scott says, I, um, I think if he had played in a different college, uh, the, the people might look at him differently. A scout told me that he's a bigger Chris Olave and, you know, Chris Olave was my favorite receiver. Uh, and if he did, if that's the case, I, you know, what you might do is think about receivers that, uh, that we're reminded of. Uh, you know, uh, Harrison kind of reminds me of Pittman. Um, oh. Th this uh, uh, neighbors kind of reminds uh, a lot of scouts of Antonio Brown without some of the other stuff. This, this is – these are players that – in any other year, if you separate them, they're all the first receivers going off the board. So, you know, you can't go wrong. Then you you wait for the landing spot. And, yeah, this is really good. And, you know, maybe I like Romeo because he's from Don Erickson's favorite town and the place where we will all gather at Planet Hollywood in September, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, uh, Matt Kelly from Player Profiler said he is not calling him 
uh, um, Roma Dunze. He is calling him, like Scott, as you said, Romeo Dunze, which sounds a lot better than Roma Dunze. I'm with you guys on this one for sure. Um, as far as the name pronunciation goes, we have been talking receivers here. Let's shift the rookie running backs. Farrell, I'm going to pitch this to you first, and then, Scott, I want you to weigh in. Blake Corum said that he is going to be visiting with the Los Angeles Chargers as part of their top 30 picks or the top 30 visits that they can have ahead of the 2024 draft. Um, what's interesting about this? Well, the Chargers starting running back right now is Gus Edwards, who certainly doesn't wow anybody with his talent, especially given his age. But Blake Corum, if he was to go there, he would be playing for the college coach that he had been playing for his entire career in Jim Harbaugh. And he would have the opportunity to not only catch a lot of passes, but get a lot of carries in this offense as well. Jim Harbaugh wants to run the ball. And certainly if they're going to run the ball and they draft Quorum, Quorum is going to be a huge factor in that. Farrell, Stacy was talking to me last night how she loves Quorum. Quorum is her number one running back. I said, I don't know, Stacy. 5'8", 215. What's his ceiling? Farrell, what is his ceiling in the NFL when he gets to that next next level? Not only at that size, but a guy who has been under Saz his whole career, but been dominant in the Big Ten uh, against the best defenses in the world. How do you feel about Blake Corum in the NFL? I like that size. And, man, if he went to the Chargers, you would know why, and they would give him every chance to succeed. Yeah. And you're going to get the touches. So, yeah, all of these running backs – what I tend to think about them this year, and as I'm and my strategy with them, as I mentioned earlier, was to go young receiver and then pick up some of the older running backs. Uh, I don't want to get involved until I see the landing spot because I don't think any of them have value until we know exactly what they're going to do. One of one of our commentary here says there is no stud running back, and you know, may and your college hasn't made a stud running back. Maybe the NFL will based on a uh, landing spot. And uh, what's the kid out of Notre Dame that had a Osric estimate. estimate? He had a disappointing combine. He bounced back at his pro day. I like the way he runs the ball. There's things about him I like. So I, I think you're getting in dangerous waters when you start targeting and saying, this is my favorite running back. This is my favorite running back. You know, Austin Eckler was no one's favorite running back when he was coming out. Right. And uh, look what happened. So it's – um. Yeah, that, that's how I'm playing the running back. And, and you know, I, so so I really don't know, and so I'm really not talking. Scott? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Scott, this is interesting because, like Farrell kind of alluded to, we don't want to have take lock where we, we super believe in one of these running backs prior to the NFL draft, and then after the NFL draft, we can't get away from that. Like, we, we, we have to understand – that this is a rolling process. This is a process that ch is going to change uh, in the next three weeks when we have the NFL draft. I don't know who your number one running back is. Maybe it's Blake Corum, but if it's not, where does Blake Corum rank for you among the rookie rushers? Yeah, uh, Corum Corum's probably my third best running back at this point, but it, it clearly, the first, first of all, there's definitely, there's no running back that's coming out this year that's as talented as Bijan or Gibbs. That, right. As far as just their talent. That, that, that I think that's a fact pretty much that anybody would agree with. But landing spot is key. If I'm, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, I'm praying they, they take the first running back off the board. I'd love them to take Brooks or Benson. If the Cowboys take one of those running backs, that could be your one five right there. He, it, it's not it's not the talent. It's the opportunity and the volume. Mm -hmm. So you just have to wait and see. You know, Corum, if Corum ends up on the Chargers, I mean, Gus Edwards is a pretty good goal line back. He's proven that. But Corum is good, too. But so I don't I don't really think that would vault him in the number one. I really think if, if whoever lands in Dallas – you know, there are a couple other places out there that could be sleeper, like Arizona. I mean, you got James Conner, but if they were to, to draft a dynamic running back, you know, whoever lands in the best opportunity will be the first pick in the rookie draft, obviously. But I think that that person could be the one five, or clearly, you know, one four or one five. If 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 someone goes somewhere where there's a great opportunity, that's it. Opportunity and volume is it, it, worth more than talent. Scott, let's let's stay on that Cowboys running back situation here um, and talk about Jonathan Brooks. Ian Rappaport reported that Brooks is actually visiting with the Cowboys, and he's coming off this ACL tear. The Cowboys, the, the cupboard is bare. I mean, Hudson Kern Reeve already said in the chat, if I can bring up this this um, this quote that he had with um, in, in regards to Rico Dowdle, and I don't think I can, but he basically yeah. said. Rico Dowdle is not the Cowboys running back this year. Don't draft him. And I think that's the temptation for a lot of people to do that right now. But, you know, the, the cupboard is kind of bare with free agency running backs. 
it, and the Cowboys have a quasi bear running back room right now without a leading the way. Um, if Brooks is drafted by the Cowboys in the second round, um, this, this is really interesting. Now there's rumors that Ezekiel Elliott could be coming back for Dallas this year, which I think for dynasty is kind of a, it's a non-starter. It doesn't mean a whole lot for us. Scott, what's interesting to me, and you mentioned Trey Benson, if the Cowboys take either Benson or Brooks in the second round, all of a sudden, as, as you alluded to, 105 in these in, in these rookie Easy. drafts, right? Easy. As a Cowboys fan, who would you rather see Dallas take? Jonathan Brooks, who is coming off the ACL, or Trey Benson? Maybe not the talent that Brooks is, but he's healthy for 2024. Personally, I'd rather see Brooks because I think he's a better running back. And, you know, you're talking about a 20-year-old kid. You know, he tore his ACL. He's going to be fine. You know, he's going to have the nine months. Even if he starts a little slow, maybe in September he doesn't. But, you know, look look at how – look at what um, Brees Hall did, you know, this year coming back. He started a little slow. But by the end of the year, he was the number one running back in, in football as far as – you know, as far as fantasy football goes. He won people many championships. So I'd rather see Brooks – um, but like I said, whoever that – I don't think they would take Quorum. I don't think he's their kind. But Dallas right. is pretty famous for taking a pretty good running back and making them a star. You know, Ezekiel Elliott, as you mentioned, which I'm praying they don't bring him back. I love Zeke. have Zeke jersey. But they need a young stud to just – you know, they need to create some enthusiasm on this team. Bringing Zeke, mm -hmm. Elliott, back, Zeke Elliott back is not going to create enthusiasm for this season. We need a young stud. That is going to be our number one guy, and Daddle is just a is just a complimentary player. He's definitely not. If if, if he's our starting running back, any twenty carries a game, um, it, it's bad. It's very bad. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm just thinking about this, guys. Um, when when we look back in the history of Jerry Jones drafting um, running backs, young running backs, right? Um, he had, as you alluded to, Scott, he had Ezekiel Elliott. People will rip on Felix Jones, but Felix Jones had a couple of good years couple there good as well. Um, uh, and Murray, uh, Murray, they drafted Murray. Didn't Demarco he? Murray was the other guy I was going to bring up. Demarco Murray out he of was, Oklahoma. He was, was the number one running back one of those seasons in fantasy football. I forget right. Season, but. You want to go back to Emmett Smith? We can go back to Emmett Smith, yeah. and and we can go back to honestly, they didn't draft him, but he did play three years with the Cowboys, and that was Darren McFadden who went to Jerry Jones all the modern in, exactly. in Arkansas, Arkansas. And, had, exactly. and had, and had three years uh, with the Cowboys as well. So there, there is something here. Again, I mentioned this at the top of the show, Bill's wide receiver, Cowboys running back, Chargers running back, Cowboys running back, maybe number one out of that is what we're watching for here. I want to shift the focus to quarterbacks here, Farrell, and I'll throw this to you first. The athletics, Bruce Feldman um, uh, in his uh, latest piece for, for his publication said that a college football coach said, Michael Penix has, quote, elite arm talent in the 2024 class. Now, Feldman spoke with plenty of NFL coaches and college coaches. He does this every year, and they're speaking with anonymity, so they know that their name will not go behind these quotes. Regarding the player or the coach that he talked with about Penix, quote, his arm talent is as good as I've ever seen. He can throw every single ball on a rope. You watch them, and there's so much tape where you're just blown away by all the throws he's making in the windows with the touch he has. And he's just so accurate on all these big throws. He also didn't need much room to throw it. The people around him didn't even phase him. Penix says his – or, or um, uh, Feldman said this coach said Penix's ability to manipulate defenses, which is a huge thing in the NFL, is high-level stuff. Now, he does turn 24 this month, so it's not exactly like he's a 20- or 21-year-old kid coming into the NFL. He's not. He's 24. He had the, the the shoulder issues, the ACL issues. He started with Indiana, transferred to Washington. His physicals apparently have checked out okay. Now, what's interesting about this to me, Farrell, is we have a boffo class of quarterbacks this yeah. year in May and, and Williams and Daniels and McCarthy. Penix is probably number five on that list, maybe number six behind Bo Nix. But I wonder if he were to come out last year or if he were to come out next year, Penix would be right up there with the number one overall quarterback. So to me, I think he is being penalized for being in a really good quarterback class. Penix is an interesting guy. Feldman actually said that your Las Vegas Raiders are going to take Michael Penix in this draft right now. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Penix at the next level as far as uh, super flex drafts go where you need all the quarterbacks you can get, Farrell? Yeah. Um, 
this is a player where you love the athlete and then you wonder about him playing quarterback. And then you go turn on the film of him playing quarterback and he's fantastic and he's fantastic with wherever he's been. The only problem with him is I don't think he's ever finished a season. I could be wrong about this last one, but I don't think he's ever played a complete season, but that doesn't have anything to do with style of his play. Maybe that has something to do with just bad luck. And I think anyone that looks at this player knows he is a elite uh quarterback i you know we <laughs> uh, guy that played down at miami for a few years didn't benefit you know was, was disabled in the first round by a impressive uh draft class a few years ago what was his name from miami yeah i think it's marino yeah oh yeah. You're, more yeah. than a few years ago yeah a few years ago <laughs> uh, so I, <laughs> that was more than a few years it ago. was more than, yeah Todd but Blackwood, you, you know, know where it, you're going with this. history okay, history will serve that you know you could so I, I really like the idea of any team that decides to get in business with this player short term or long term I like him for your super flex if you're uh, you know if you like the landing spot you could even make a case for him to be in one of these uh, uh, one of these empire leagues because uh, you've got to win it two years uh, two years in a row. And uh, he may be the guy that wins it for you in the second year. Maybe not this year, but maybe the second year. Scott, I want to throw this question to you. And and I, if you want to talk specifically about Penix, please feel free. But I wanted to kind of expand this because I know we, we, this is a rarity where we can have you on. Farrell is going to be back next week. You probably will not be next week. Can you talk about the rookie quarterbacks as you see them in the NFL draft for fantasy purposes? Yeah, I mean – I definitely think Caleb Williams, if he's on the Bears, he's going to be surrounded by talent. So he is very talented. So I definitely think he could come in. He could be a top 15 quarterback, I think, even in this coming year. Jaden Daniels with his rushing ability could be, but it's it really landing spot. We know where Caleb Williams is going. Yeah. I mean, as far as Penix, I mean, elite arm talent doesn't mean elite quarterback. I, I don't know. It, it certainly can't hurt that your quarterback can make every throw, but he still needs to have it. You know, it, it, between here is where you watch Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't use, he doesn't throw 80 yard. He didn't throw 80 yard passes for the past two years. He's just so smart and he's so mistake free. He, that's why he's so great. Penix, I, I think he could be good. I watched him in college. I, I think he definitely has potential. You just, it's so hard with quarterbacks. You just don't know. But just because he has a great arm doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be a great quarterback. But that's I that's, think I think he'll be go in the first round. I think, yeah, but I, I think Scott's skill set is goes beyond arm. Yeah. No, but I'm saying that that no matter what, he's going to be a first round pick. I think where he will go, we'll we'll see. But he has to show that he can do it in the NFL. College is much different. Right. Well, you know, Lamar Jackson proves that if you go at the end of the draft to a very good football <laughs> team, you can get a little kick up. Absolutely. Here, right? so I love Lamar Jackson. Sure. Scott, let me ask you this: um, uh, Penix or Nix? Uh, let's let, let's throw them in a vacuum right now. Where let's throw a landing spot out of the equation. Which prospect do you like better for the NFL, Penix or Nix? Probably Penix, because of the tools. Or what? What is it about Penix that that has you putting him over uh, Bo Nix? I mean, just just from the, when I watched him in college, I, I just I don't know what else to say. I just like him a little better. I don't think mm-hmm. he's got you know. I don't think it's leaps and bounds over. But if you're asking me who I would choose, it would right now would be Penix. It'd be and, Penix. And, but, you know, and the landing spot doesn't necessarily mean anything from go. I mean, you know, of course Lamar landed Baltimore. But I'm saying whoever picks him, he could struggle this first year. Who knows? What will he do year two and three? He he can elevate. Look what C.J. Stroud did. I mean, the Texans were terrible last year. They literally. Fought to get the number one pick and blew it. And, but CJ Stroud went from a two win team to a playoff team. So he can, any, it doesn't matter where you land as a quarterback. If you're that great, you make your team great and you yes. make a playoff team very quickly. I, I think what's compelling about the Penix versus Knicks discussion, and I think we can agree that we're talking about the number five versus number six uh, in this draft because the top, the other four guys are going to go ahead of them. What's compelling to me is, Knicks could be drafted or Penix could be drafted as a starter in, in 2024, at least for part of the season at a minimum. And then the other guy might be drafted as a backup. So then what do we do as super flex drafters? Are we going to hang out with, with Penix when Knicks could be a starter if we believe Penix is the better player, even though he's going to be a backup? Are we going to draft Knicks above Penix if Knicks is, is drafted as a starter, but we know Penix has the higher up? Like that's that's the thing that is that's so compelling to me. 
uh, about these quarterbacks this year. And that's not even taking into equation the top four quarterbacks that could be going off the board as one, two, three, or four. So much to unpack, so much fun to talk about it, and who better to talk about it than a guy who won six FFPC <laughs> Dynasty Leagues last year in Scott yes. Cohen. Scott, listen, man, I, I really appreciate you coming on. It was short notice tonight. Uh, you did great. I learned a lot tonight, and I'm glad to hear your Thank insight you. uh, tonight. I wish you nothing but the best going forward, and not only in 2024 and beyond. Thank you so much for coming on. Let's do this again sometime. Uh, it it anytime. was so much fun. Good luck in in your, your future Thanks, fantasy Sam. endeavors. Farrell, I think I'm in a league with you, Farrell. I, I have to double-check that. I'll let you know. I'll get ready for second place. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Enjoy your weekend, man. That is Scott Cohen, ladies and gentlemen, the six-time FFPC Dynasty League champion, six six championships in 2023 alone. He is the man, and uh, so glad to have him on the podcast tonight. Uh, We do have some emails. We will not have a chance to get to him tonight, but I promise No, Farrell, I promise promise the listeners, if you send us an email, we will get them on the show eventually. I thought you were a little harsh to our uh, listener, Emma. Who was checking in? And I thought this was just a little harsh. And you know, if I had a fan like that, <laughs> I would encourage her to enjoy, uh, the, the, you know, be, being part of the podcast. Well, as you know, Emma has been on the show before, Farrell, um, mm-hmm. when she was in the background of my camera shot a couple mm-hmm. of years ago when we were talking to a dynasty player. I remember she asked you, she waddled up to the uh, computer and asked you if this was soccer. And I saw that as bad parenting right away. I, I there were some things already that had me concerned. Well, you said Robbie Fetcher's daughters would never confuse no, soccer with no, football. No, Fetch, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. So, yeah, yes. I, I, and, and I've tried – now, here's the thing, Farrell. Um, she is not um, – we have not – she's been in gymnastics. Uh, she's done some other stuff. But her first team sport, you guessed it, will be soccer starting mm-hmm. in just a couple of weeks. So I, I don't know what I can do. All I can do is support her. Uh, yeah, in well, that. That's fine. It's yeah. good she plays it. Yes. Good she plays it. Uh, and stay, it's in good. That, stay in that, uh, stay on those uh, bars and the, the horse and everything else you do in, in, in gymnastics. Uh, NIL can quite reward uh, the gymnasts who make their way to college. Yeah, she could be the what next Livy Dunn for all I know. There and, you go. and Livy Dunn will never have to – I mean, the, the fact that all the money that she's made at LSU over the last four years, that's mm-hmm. kind of what I envision for my for my kids to be able to do that. Good Whether college that, playing, Bucky. I like that. Yes, yeah, if we can make it happen. We will always make it happen with the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship. KFFSC.com is where to sign up to compete against players like me, players like former guests of this show for sure. Uh, Farrell, thank you so much for hopping aboard tonight. I bid you adieu. Have a great weekend, my friend. We'll do this again next Friday. Thank you, buddy. That is Farrell Elliott, the definitive commissioner of Fantasy Football. Check out the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship at KFFSC.com, of course, at KFFSC Official on the X and at J. Farrell Elliott on the X. I want to thank Scott Cohen, Farrell Elliott, the FFPC, Rob Bryce, of course, each and every one of you for hanging out and watching us at this early time on Friday night tonight. We will return at 10 p.m. Eastern time next Friday, and we will have on six-time FFPC Dynasty League champion Drew Jennings to uh, hop aboard to talk everything that's going on with the rookies, everything that's going on with the veterans, a dynasty outlook from Drew Jennings next week. In case you missed it, watch last night's High Stakes Fantasy Football Show on the Better Sports Network on any of the BSN socials, as well as the FFPC socials. We had Stacy Perez from Fantasy and Frames. If you know the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship, you know Stacy Perez. A lot of great stuff from her. Of course, the host of the uh, the host and founder of the Women in Fantasy Football Best Ball Challenge presented by Fantasy and Frames. A lot of good stuff there and a lot of good stuff going forward there. In case you missed it, you want to find out more, uh, go to those FFPC socials to watch it again. Tuesday night, we had the April 2024 edition of the Road of His High Stakes Lowdown featuring Stu Keen, an eight-time Dynasty League champion uh, who talked a lot about how he has managed his teams to success, how he sustains that success, and how he's planning on winning a lot more Dynasty Leagues in 2024. Check that out at any of the FFPC socials at your convenience. As Farrell alluded to, Empire Leagues are here in the FFPC. Go to myffpc.com, sign up for those Empire Leagues, a Dynasty fantasy football twist, and of course, Dynasty Orphans, Dynasty Startups available at myffpc.com as well. Time is running out to play in the never too early FFPC best ball tournaments, both the classic and super flex, nearly 85% full. So make sure you're signing up for those, taking your shot at a $25,000 or a $10,000 grand prize, regardless of whether they're filled or not. Um, And they're probably going to fill before April 25th, which is the cutoff. 
you have less than three weeks to play in this. Make sure you're signing up for that at myffpc.com and draft for a million bucks in April. Who would have thought? The Fantasy Pros Championship is live at myffpc.com. You can plunk down your 350 bucks uh, and play for a million dollar grand prize, $6 million prize pool. And make sure you're getting in now because of that early bird discount. Remember, if you draft, if you sign up and draft right now, you will get a uh, free $35 ffpc team uh, credit to your account and we'll do that up to three times for you so make sure you're registering now and then drafting right now and you'll get those free credits applied to your account uh drafts are available in the fantasy pros championship and the never too early best ball tournament 30 sec uh, 30 second 60 second uh two hour and six hour clock so whatever your schedule is you can play in those three tournaments over at myffpc.com uh remember to like this video subscribe to the channel and comment on the video, share it with your friends and enemies, get notified every time we go live. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Certainly appreciate it. Streaming, downloading, whatever you're doing, your weekend officially starts now. <laughs>this has been another episode of the high stakes fantasy football hour presented by my it was broadcast live and was watched around the world bulky and farrell will be back next week with more analysis more interviews and more advice from guests much smarter than they are thanks for watching and we'll talk with you again next week you know, one of the things I always say on this show, and, and I don't want to make it seem too salesy, but I will say many of the dynasty players we've had on, many of the best ball players we had on will attribute their success to drafting in January, drafting in February, drafting in March, drafting in April. Even if you look at the rookies alone, all these players, once they have a real spot in the NFL, once Trey Benson goes to the Cowboys, once Braylon Allen goes to the Bills, once... Um, you know, Malik Neighbors goes to the Giants. All these guys' ADPs will go up. If you want to get in, get in now, and then you don't have to worry about drafting these guys because instead of drafting them in the seventh or eighth round, you already have 13th and 14th round shares of them. Best piece of advice I can give you. So many people who have come on the show will tell me tell tell you the same as well. So register for those tournaments. Get your dynasty teams and your empire league teams over at myffpc.com. Sales pitch done. We will talk with you next Thursday on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Show when we are joined by Thor Nystrom from uh, Fantasy Pros as well as Bob Harris from Football Guys. And then next Friday, as well as I just mentioned, Drew Jennings, the FFPC, six-time FFPC dynasty winner. A lot of stuff going on at the FFPC. Join in the fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great 2024 season as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you soon.